Congratulations! congratulations! Wow! You read a whole science book, and even if you didn't, congratulations, because we're gonna break down the top 10 most interesting things that we learned in Carl Sagan's Cosmos. Boom! So Carl Sagan is essentially the penultimate science communicator. This book was recommended for us to read by pretty much everyone that we look up to, including some of you on our Reddit discussion, so we are so happy that we completed this book. Cosmos the book was actually created as a complement to a 13 episode series which was recreated this year by another amazing science communicator, the one, the only, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hope you saw it. One of the things we really liked about this book was Sagan's use of visual language, a lot of playful anecdotes about dinner parties. Yeah, he's funny. <laughs> he's very, very funny. And he took this expansive idea of the universe, which is pretty complex, pretty hard to understand, <laughs> and broke it down and made it really easy to understand, which as someone who doesn't have a science degree, I appreciate. True. As much as it's a book about science, it's also a book about history, and it examines civilization's relationship with science throughout time, the future, and the past. Yeah, I think that was one thing that really startled me was I thought this was just gonna be like this futuristic sci-fi book, but so much of it is spent delving into the past and into history, which is really interesting. You don't get to learn that all the time. No, it's great. And now, 10, ten things the cosmos, cosmos can teach you. Blast off! <laughs> <laughs> the Earth is so cool, and we should be happy that it's our home. If you were to be inserted anywhere in the cosmos, there's a one in one billion trillion trillion chance that you would end up on a planet. So worlds are pretty rare and pretty precious. Sex was invented two billion years ago. Before two billion years ago, new organisms would have to be created solely based on random genetic mutations. This means that evolution would happen very slowly. Then reproduction started to happen and organisms were sharing their DNA. This created a lot more variety and therefore evolution sped up. From a sheer probability perspective, extraterrestrial life is out there. As Reddit user Abra Kadursix brought up, intelligent life is likely rare. If you consider the history of Earth, intelligent life, and more specifically space travel, has only existed for a tiny, tiny blip. If you think about the whole expansive universe, the likelihood that there's other intelligent life who's interested in space travel is probably super rare. And what would this rare life look like? A Vedalink and Piana24 from our Reddit allege that it might look more like something we know. They think that because we're all made up of the same things, that alien life might just look like cells that are similar to ours. This book supports the search for extraterrestrial life, so what do you think? Are aliens out there? I don't know, I think so. Yeah. From a philosophical perspective, we are all a part of something much bigger. Us and you and well, every human being is just a collection of water, calcium, and organic molecules. Some people may find this demeaning and sort of downplays the dignity of life and takes away from the importance of each of our own individual lives, but Carl Sagan argued against this and found that it was fascinating and elevating to think that evolution created these molecular machines that are so intricate and so perfect that is us as humans. Also, if you think about how big the universe is, there are more stars than every grain of sand on every beach in the world. That's crazy. Some people feel intimidated by how big the universe is, but Sagan found this to inform his spirituality. It made him feel interested, curious, and uh, I guess happier? Yeah, and probably he just sort of, it seemed like he felt like he was a part of something bigger, which is actually can be very spiritual and not sort of take away from what life is actually about. Another way that Carl Sagan sort of contextualized how big and expansive everything is, is he thought about how us humans measure our lives in decades, whereas the sun would measure its lives in millions and hundreds of millions of years. And so essentially, to the sun's perspective, we are all like little mayflies. We live our full birth to death in the equivalent of a sun's like day. And so it's kind of an interesting way of thinking that, you know, we are just the tiniest blip in the history of the universe, which can be scary, but can also just realize that we are part of this huge, huge, huge thing. During the time of ancient civilizations, we actually had a pretty good handle on what the universe was, but power, greed, and the concept of one god kind of ruined that. In the 6th century BC, the island-based Ionian culture believed in the concept of matter. Unfortunately, they disappeared following the Persian conquest, and science was halted. Also, power and greed leads to this concept of economy, which still exists today. 
This creates upper class wealthy people who actually are the ones who are more educated. These same people are unaccustomed to working with their hands, are more easily able to stick to the status quo and do not want to challenge conventional wisdom. Because science involves thinking outside of the box, maybe these more educated wealthy people find that harder and therefore science potentially slowed down. Astrology is not real. Sorry. Carl Sagan would be super upset to know that even still today there are these horrible horoscopes in pretty much every newspaper. As he puts it, astronomy, the study of celestial objects, and space is a science. Astrology, on the other hand, is a pseudoscience. The planets do not affect our daily lives. We are not that important. And also, if you think of twins, why don't they have the exact same ups and downs under the astrological calendar? Truth. The planets in our solar system are amazing. While Mars is not as Earth-like as we once anticipated, and it doesn't have any evidence of microbial life, no matter what you've heard, there are really cool robots roaming around, taking pictures, scooping up stuff, and that's really cool. Also, if we plan to go live on Mars, which people are trying to make happen, we would be the Martians. Also, Jupiter is freaking cool. It is huge and it's actually a failed star. So Sagan kind of said if it had actually become a full-fledged star, then we would have a lot more light here on Earth. Maybe there'd be no night and that'd be pretty crazy. Evolution is a fact, not a theory. Carl Sagan writes this boldly in the book and it's very refreshing to see. And it's amazing to us to think that even 34 years after this has been published, it's still a contentious issue. Science is a self-correcting enterprise. This is a quote from page 94 of Cosmos. An American-Canadian 2011 said on our Reddit page that they thought this was a really eloquent way of saying that science was as open to failure as it is to discovery. The cool thing about the scientific method is that it encourages every kind of investigation and it doesn't matter how silly the question is. Also, Carl Sagan writes beautifully about how science is sort of about imagination and skepticism working in a really fine balance. I think that's a really interesting way of just talking about it. Like you need to be an imaginative and think outside the box to sort of have these great grand questions, but it's also important to be skeptical to ensure that the science behind it is correct. And finally, we need to do our part to help our planet. Are we gonna be ignorant and complacent when we consider all the negative things that affect our planet? Are we gonna use our intelligence and technology for the better or for the worse of the planet? Are we gonna think short term and selfishly or are we gonna think about whether or not our grandchildren will survive? Carl Sagan spends a lot of time in this book zooming out and observing Earth from far away and seeing it as a very small, tiny, fragile thing that it is. By doing this, it seems very obvious to him that we should all be working as one species, as human beings coming together to think about the betterment of our planet. It reminds me of this funny thing that we once thought about how if aliens did exist and they flew by and were going to attack us, how they might look at us and be like, oh, there's no need to attack them. They're already all killing each other. That's kind of odd for a species to do that. And I think that's kind of what it makes me think about. When you observe the earth from far away, it makes you realize, you know what, why are we doing this? We should all calm down, you know, work together and think about space travel and think about how we're going to make sure that we exist as a species as the future comes. So thank you for taking part in the ASAP book club. We really appreciate it. We had so much fun reading this book. It was really so grounding and just so great to view our world from such a vast place. We really kind of relate to it as almost like a self-help book. All of our problems seem so small when you're reading about something that's talking about something so vast. That being said, the month is now over, so we have a new book for the next month. So Jess, what is it? As suggested by Amanda Kenner, Kristen Luca and Betsy Lee. It's The Hot Zone by Richard Preston. Ding, 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 ding. So this is a 1994 book about the Ebola crisis that was gripping Africa at the time. Um, there's obviously parallels between that and now. So I think this is a really appropriate book to read at this point. Our interest in this book came from wanting to start an intelligent conversation about the Ebola crisis. We really want to try and think about what the appropriate way to deal with it is. Richard Preston, who wrote this book, actually recently wrote an article for The New Yorker, which was so fascinating. I really couldn't put it down. It was gripping, it was real, and that's a good taste of what I think this book is going to be like. So you can check that out if you want to sort of read that first to see if you'll like it. But what it made me think was that this book is going to be fascinating and we're so excited to read it. We also just heard that Ridley Scott may be making it into a mini series, so I think this is a pretty popular book right now and definitely really appropriate for our book club. So you can keep up with us on our subreddit ASAP Team. We'll also be hosting a Google Hangout on the week of the 24th of November, 
So make sure you follow us on all of our social media to figure out when that actual date will be. Other than that, uh, get your hands on this book, start reading, and we're really excited to be doing this. See you soon. Bye. Bye. The earth is super cool and we should be proud that we're on it. <laughs> <laughs> on it. Sass. Sagan loved aliens. <laughs> Astrology is not real. What? <laughs>